I'm sure that for most people this evening in our area was just a normal suburban evening. The beginning of autumn, pleasant weather between summer and winter, which is so pleasant to feel. I cooked Chris's favorite dish, and we were almost done with dinner. Our house was four houses down the street from the intersection of Sunrise and Purchase. He could be called modest. Nothing fancy, but big enough to raise the kids even when they became teenagers and needed their own space. At the beginning of our marriage, just a year after we got married, we both had stable jobs. After much discussion about the risks associated with a mortgage, we decided we wanted to buy a house. It was one of the best decisions of our young lives. Owning a home made our decision to have children much easier. We found a new area on the outskirts of the city where houses were being built and chose a house based on one of the samples. It was built according to our order. Our home had to be exactly the same as the sample, with the exception of a few custom modifications allowed. Chris and I were delighted with our new home. We knew the outside would be the same as many of our neighbors, but the countertops and carpet we chose made it feel truly ours. We spent many weekends in those early years improving our garden. Now, 13 years later, we are a typical family of four. Chris, me, and our two children, Josh and Josie. We were a typical family, yes, but tonight in our house, things were going to be anything but typical. Chris and I have been married for 15 years. We met in college, fell in love, and soon got married. I don't want to bore you with the details, but for us, it was like a fairy tale. Throughout our marriage, we found ways to quickly overcome any problems that came between us. We were what you might call a comfortable couple. With both sets of grandparents nearby, we found time for ourselves, even in those early years when our children were small. But recently everything has changed, and this is what led to today's conversation. Yes, we were comfortable, but tonight there was no question of comfort. Something new was starting in the Hatcher family tonight. It was a summer Thursday evening, and the children were at Chris's parents' house. My father-in-law and mother-in-law, Carl and Jenny, were going to take them to the zoo tomorrow. They loved spending time with their grandchildren, and I needed to keep the children out of the house. Everything was ready. Dinner has come to an end. It was time to start a conversation that I knew would be difficult. Let's sit for a while and drink another glass of wine, I suggested at the table. Honey, can we talk about something important? I pause to emphasize the seriousness of the situation. I know this will be difficult for you to hear, another pause to give Chris time to collect her thoughts. But I, I don't want to hide anything from you. Another pause. Serious conversations cannot be rushed. For me, it's too important for us to be honest with each other. This is the foundation of our marriage, I added. What? What do you want to say? Chris looked at me, confused. I continued. You know I mentioned Vic from work a few times, right? So, we've been having lunch together for the last couple of months, and we've become well close. I looked into her eyes and noticed how the confusion on her face began to develop, perhaps into anger. Chris started to speak, but I interrupted her. No, we didn't do anything inappropriate, but that's why I wanted to talk tonight. We decided to go on a date. This time I didn't stop. Now I needed to quickly finish the rest of the conversation. I know you'll be angry, but we got married when we were very young, and I just need to do some research on this. I'm not going to disrespect you by secretly dating behind your back. We have always been honest with each other. You know that I love you and would never cheat on you. Our date is scheduled for tomorrow evening, but I will return to you on Saturday morning. I think that last part made my intentions regarding the date clear. I expected a scream at that moment, but Chris just stared at me, unable to speak, stunned. I knew it would be a real shock, so I just let it all out. I didn't want her to have any doubts about my intentions. This has nothing to do with what you did or didn't do. We have great sex. You are beautiful. I just have to try this, but for a little while, and then everything will go back to normal. Nothing will change between us. Soon I will be only with you again. I need to do this. I owe it to myself to do this. I sat looking into her eyes, trying to look innocent, pretending to try to minimize the damage. 
but that's the thing. I wasn't trying to minimize the damage. I was trying to maximize it. I knew Chris wouldn't accept that I was going on a date. You see, Chris, Christina, my wife, has always been very jealous. Very jealous. She may have been speechless, but as I expected, anger was building in her eyes. Then he fell on me. If I hadn't anticipated her reaction, I could have gotten hurt. She grabbed the glass in front of her and threw it forcefully in my direction. Even though I was ready, I barely had time to dodge and the glass flew past my head. I heard it crash against the wall behind me. Aw, oh, looks like I'll have to fix the drywall. But let's take a step back. You might have expected it to be a broken man listening to his wife announce that she's going on a date. Isn't it the woman who usually says she needs to find herself? But not this time. This time it was me, the husband, who asked the most destructive and painful question in a marriage. But please, before you start thinking I'm a total creep, listen to my story. Yes, I knew that my conversation with Christina would deal her a crushing blow. I knew this would change our marriage forever. Hell, I didn't even think our marriage would survive this test, but I had to do it. It was the only way I could think of to save our marriage. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Ron Hatcher, and I have been married to Christina for 15 years. We have two wonderful children, Josh, 12, and Josie, 10. Christina is a beautiful woman, she is 35, and even after having two children, she has maintained the figure that I met her with. Her height is 1 meter 65, weight is about 60 kilograms. She has blonde hair and blue eyes. She didn't have a full bust, but I always considered her breasts to be one of her best assets. I've always been a fan of beautiful breasts. Even after two children, her breasts remained firm and held high. Yes, I sometimes looked at other women, especially at their shapes, but I always tried to do it unnoticed. Maybe I paid attention to others, but to me, Christina has always been the most beautiful woman I have ever met, or at least the one who paid attention to me. We have always had, in my opinion, an excellent intimate life. Although we had to fit sex around the children's schedule and make sure they were already asleep, we found time at least a couple of times a week. Many of my older friends complained that their wives were losing interest in sex. This didn't happen to me and Christina. We both initiated intimacy when we were in the mood and both enjoyed the afterglow. We didn't have much experience before marriage. I think we both had a couple of previous partners, but in the early years of our marriage, we were quite modest in bed. Christina was passionate, and our intimacy always ended with great emotions for both of us. Sex was a way to express our love for each other. Sometimes, usually when Christina was drinking, we became a little more relaxed. Recently, after a party at a neighbor's house, Christina allowed herself to relax a little. Returning home, she put the children to bed, and I went to the kitchen to pour us another glass. Even before we left the party, Christina kissed me so passionately that I immediately realized that she wanted to go home. I knew that she had drunk a little and was in the mood for intimacy. Okay, maybe she was even drunk, but I wasn't going to miss this chance. We quickly took off our clothes and ended up on the bed, kissing. Christina slid down my body and began to pleasure me. It was messy, but moments like this didn't happen often, and I enjoyed the process. Usually, it was a short warm-up, but this time she was clearly enjoying herself. I relaxed and just enjoyed it until I felt I was close to completion. Oh, Chris, I'm almost ready, I warned her. She raised her head but I had no intention of slowing down. I pulled her towards me and turned her over on her back. I love giving Christina pleasure. Christina lay in front of me, her breathing quickened, and I wanted to make this moment special. I leaned down and kissed her thighs, feeling her tremble with excitement. I liked to watch how she reacted to my touches, how her body responded to caresses. I gently touched her in the most gentle way, her moans became louder and her body tensed in anticipation. I wanted her to feel every moment so that this moment was filled with love and passion. Christina raised her hips, immersed in her sensations, her eyes closed from the rolling wave of pleasure. She moaned and I knew she was on the edge. Her reaction was sincere and open and it delighted me. 
Christina arched, and after a moment, she was overcome by an orgasm, which made her shudder and exhale heavily. I smiled, looking at her as she slowly came to, feeling every moment of this intimate moment. But that was just the beginning. We both wanted to continue, our desires coincided, and I felt an even greater fire flare up between us. I gently pulled her towards me, feeling the warmth of her body, and slowly entered her. Christina screamed with pleasure, her hands clenched on the sheets, her eyes sparkling with passion. My movements were slow and confident, I enjoyed every moment, every moan of hers. Christina arched towards me, our bodies moved in unison. It was not just a physical union, it was a moment of absolute intimacy, when nothing else existed except the two of us and our passion. When it was all over, we lay there, hugging each other. It was not just passion, but love that made this moment special. Sometimes these moments are the most important, when there are no barriers, only pure, sincere feelings. The next morning was Sunday, and the smell of breakfast woke me up. When I walked into the kitchen, Chris had already fed the kids and was loading the dishwasher. I approached her from behind, put my arm around her waist with one hand, and grabbed her buttock with the other. You were a tigress last night. Chris turned around, blushing with embarrassment. This was immediately obvious. I decided to tease her a little. I pulled her closer to me and whispered in her ear. You asked me to have sex with you last night well, did I manage? She turned around smiling, but her face turned bright red. She pushed me away and playfully slapped me on the shoulder. Go eat before the food gets cold. Overall, after 15 years of marriage, I thought our sex life was great. Chris was everything I needed, and until recently I had never even thought about having an affair. But now, even though I was her husband and voicing an absolutely outrageous question, it still wasn't a typical, honey, I want to go on a date situation. So here I am, in our typical suburban home, sitting in the kitchen across from my wife and telling her I'm going on a date. I thought I was speaking clearly. I declared my intention to sleep with another woman this Friday. But my true intentions were far from what I voiced to Chris. So why does a smart person like me say such outright stupidity? As you will see, I had my reasons. And there is more to this story than just my desire to get someone else's woman. Honestly, honey, we only had lunch together a couple of times. We haven't, well, we haven't reached the end yet. I could see the shock on Chris's face. She looked at me like I was an alien. She froze and remained silent, so I continued. But I want to be honest with you, honey. Victoria, you remember her from my work, right? We plan to have dinner and drinks, and then, well, we'll probably spend the night together. I've already booked a room at the Hyatt. Finally, Chris jumped to her feet and screamed, Ron, what the hell? Are you going to what? You're my husband. You can't just go on a date. Chris, please calm down. I understand that you may be in a little pain right now, but I wanted to be completely honest with you. I don't want to cheat on you. We've been married for 15 years. Have you ever thought about sleeping with someone else? I thought this last question would make her think, but in anger she continued without stopping. Fuck you, Ron. You're not going anywhere, not on any date. Then I said the very words that every cheater says in similar circumstances, words that try to turn the situation around but actually mean nothing. Chris, me and Vic don't like each other. This shouldn't change anything between us. Honey, I don't love her. It's just sex. My words seemed to stun her. She just stared at me like I was crazy. So I continued, trying to justify the unimaginable. You know, we got married young, and I just want to explore some things for a while. I'm sure Vic and I will let off some steam quickly, and then everything will return to normal. I hope you understand that I have my own needs, and between us things have become, well, boring. Damn it, maybe you can find yourself a man and sleep with him too. Actually, I think you should do it. Find someone and have sex with them. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my mouth. I encouraged my wife to sleep with another man. I prayed that she would not take advantage of this offer. If she did that, I knew our marriage would be over. Now I have said everything I wanted. 
every stupid argument I could come up with. I fell silent and just sat there, looking at Chris, waiting for her reaction to my statement, I'm going on a date. I know what you're thinking. Is this Ron guy crazy or just stupid? If you want to cheat on your wife, why not just do it in secret? Why not tell your wife that you are leaving on a short business trip? You could take your mistress to a restaurant and then to a hotel. There you could make love like rabbits and your wife wouldn't know anything. Why? Why didn't I start a secret affair? It's simple because I didn't want to sleep with another woman. Loyalty, trust, fidelity, this is everything for marriage. Without them, marriage is empty. I knew that if I went on a date and slept with Vic, my marriage would be over. So what made me behave so irrationally? Why did I tell my wife that I was going to sleep with another woman? This guy Ron must be crazy, right? My craziness was because I discovered about two weeks ago that this was exactly what my wife was planning. She planned to sleep with another man. This happened in our home office. I was sitting on her laptop after returning from church. I was looking for photos of Josh and Josie from our recent vacation. She said she sent them to her parents and I wanted to forward them to mine. As I was flipping through my sent mail folder, I noticed several messages addressed to one Brian L. The name didn't mean anything to me, so I decided to open one of the letters. At that moment I felt that I could not breathe. Everything around me became somehow unreal, as if I was watching myself from the outside. It turned out that Chris was corresponding with some man I didn't know. I started reading the last 20 letters she sent him. It was obvious that they had been corresponding for a long time and planned to meet the next time I went on a business trip. She texted him saying she couldn't do it at our house, but was going to take the kids to her parents so they could meet at the hotel. In one of the letters, she admired the way his manhood looked. Apparently, he sent her photos. She also wrote that she couldn't wait to pleasure him and taste him. To say that I was stunned is an understatement. Chris, my wife, a model churchgoer, was going to please some guy and then, I guess, have sex with him. Chris was deleting emails from her inbox, but forgot to empty her sent messages folder. I felt physically sick. I almost threw up right there. I needed time to process this. I just couldn't believe what I read and didn't want to read any further. I got up from the computer and went to the kitchen. Chris immediately noticed that something was wrong. I needed time to think about it, so I told her there was an emergency at work. What happened at work? Why do you need to go there on Sunday? I screwed up the analysis, and our project needs to be improved. Tomorrow we need to present the results to the customer. I hated lying to Chris, but I needed to get out of the house any way I could. I got into my car and drove to the nearest park. There, in my car, I just sat and thought. I couldn't believe what I read, and I began to contemplate the end of our marriage. I couldn't stay with Chris after she cheated. Divorce, lawyers, housing, the fight for shared custody of children, all this flashed through my head like a whirlwind. When I got home, Chris was waiting for me with a worried look on her face. Is everything okay at work? Not really. My boss is angry because of my mistake. I may have to work late to fix the situation. I lied to Chris again, but this story would explain my mood and give me privacy in the coming days to think things over. You always do a good job. Everyone makes mistakes. I'm sure everything will work out. I nodded. You're probably right. I spent the evening playing with the children and watching our traditional Sunday movie. After Chris went to bed, I sat down at her computer again to study the letters more closely. It turned out that Chris met this Brian through a dating site designed for married people. Their slogan was, Spice up your life, have a romance. Chris and this Brian were exchanging sexually explicit messages, discussing what they wanted to do with each other, some pretty kinky things at that. It disgusted me. No, not sex as such I myself am a little inclined to experiment at heart, I was disgusted by the thought that my wife wanted to do all this with some stranger, but not with me. I was furious. I have never been so angry in my life. I thought about going into the bedroom, pulling Chris out of bed and shaking her thoroughly. Perhaps even hit. The thought of strangling her flashed through my head. 
I was so angry that I could have done it if it weren't for the children who were sleeping in the house. I couldn't scare them, even if she deserved it. One thing I realized while reading the letters, Chris has not cheated on me yet. She was just going to do it the next time I left. I also noticed that they had planned one meeting before, but Chris pulled out at the last minute. Perhaps the church lady could not muster enough courage to become a prostitute. Tonight, after my date question, I sat down at our kitchen table and motioned for Chris to do the same. I tried to calm the situation to give Chris time to process what was happening. I hoped this would be the end of it. Perhaps my confession of my plan betrayal will help Chris understand the scale of her own plans, and she will confess too. I've been preparing for this for the last two weeks. I still wasn't sure if my date plan would work, but I was pretty sure how Chris would react. Her jealousy had always been our problem, and I was sure that she would not accept the proposal of an open marriage that I had just put forward. However, given her plans to cheat, I wasn't as sure that I knew her as well as I thought. Chris sat back down at the table with her hands in front of her. She clenched her hands as if she was going to crush them. It seemed to me that she was considering how best to wrap them around my neck. After all, just a few minutes ago, she tried to throw a glass of water at me. I suggested the open marriage option mainly to get her to think about what she was planning. I even suggested that she take a lover. And now, as she sat there with her hands clasped, I was a little worried that she was actually considering it. She hadn't started screaming and cursing yet, but if I knew Chris, it was only a matter of time. At least I hoped it was a matter of time. If things go wrong, if she tries to accept my offer, I will quickly change tactics. I knew that if she decided that my offer to sleep with Victoria was an acceptable arrangement that gave her the opportunity to sleep with her intended lover, our marriage would be over. You see, my date with Victoria was not intended to destroy our marriage. This was my attempt to save him. I've been thinking a lot about the situation over the last couple of weeks. We had small children and what I thought was a loving relationship. But now Chris was trying to arrange a meeting for sexual pleasures. I couldn't understand why, but I loved this woman and decided to at least fight for our marriage before giving up. Chris hasn't slept with this bastard yet, but it looks like she's about to. My first step was to shake her to her core, helping her understand the extent of her betrayal. Although Christina was always jealous, I did not give her many reasons for this. Like most men on the planet, I was attracted to beautiful young women, but did not seek romance. I understood that I was not on the dating market, and I was proud that many men from our environment were jealous of my beautiful wife. No matter how beautiful the woman was in front of me, no matter how much I admired her attractiveness, I did not want to complicate my life. I valued our marriage and our family. My feelings about loyalty didn't interfere with Chris's jealousy at last year's company picnic. There I talked for some time with Victoria, one of my colleagues. It was an innocent conversation between colleagues, but it changed the course of my life. While we were talking, I looked around the crowd. People were sitting at tables, eating barbecue and talking to each other. Everything was very casual, with a relaxed summer atmosphere. I liked my job and was respected at work. I was proud to be there and show my family. Then I noticed Chris. She stood alone, looking intently at me and Victoria. When she saw me looking at her, she looked at me with hatred, then turned around and walked the other way. Vic and I were just talking about work. I knew Chris's problems. She was angry, but I did not pay attention to her madness. She wanted me to follow her and apologize, but I didn't do anything wrong and I wasn't going to appease her. What irritated her most was that Victoria was an attractive woman. She usually dressed very modestly. At work she was a professional to the core, and although always friendly, she was not flirtatious. I admired her beauty, but didn't think about her sexually. Plus, we were both married, so we're just colleagues. Today Victoria was wearing a summer dress that emphasized her thin waist and beautiful legs. What a beautiful day, isn't it, Vic? Yes, it couldn't be better, she replied. I'm looking forward to my next project. Her husband was busy playing cornhole, and I knew Victoria had found me to discuss work. She was very driven, 
and I knew she wanted to talk about staffing. Yes, this is an important task, but I am confident that you will succeed. Victoria began to talk about the difficulties of the upcoming project, and I continued to scan the crowd. I noticed Chris again. She returned from the children and stood alone again, looking straight at me. I knew that look. Anger burned in her eyes. She was angry that I was still standing here, talking to Victoria and laughing like we were old friends. I decided to defuse the situation. Victoria, sorry, I need to go. We can discuss the distribution of staff on Monday. Have a nice picnic. Of course, Ron, but I'm not giving up. I need Carlos on the team. He's perfect for the job, and I'll need his technical guidance. Okay, Vic, we'll discuss this on Monday. I left her and went to Chris. Chris, did the kids win the tug of war? She realized that I was trying to start a conversation to smooth things over. She probably thought I was feeling guilty or something, but I wasn't. I knew I didn't do anything wrong. Chris did what she does when she's angry. She boycotted me. I tried again. We need to eat. Let's call the kids and find a table. Chris simply turned around and walked towards the children. The ride back home was cold and the evening turned out no better. I hated moments like this because her reaction was completely inappropriate. Victoria and I were just having a business conversation, but Chris saw something more to it. Over the next few days, Chris was mostly silent and sex was out of the question. At such moments, I always tried to calm her down. I've already found out that talking won't help. How can you argue with an irrational person? In the end, I decided to take all the blame on myself. On Tuesday, I brought home flowers and a card that said, I love you and only you forever. Chris accepted them with a smile and a light kiss. She liked my attention, but I saw that she had not moved away yet. By Thursday, the situation had escalated to the limit. When the children went to bed, my patience ran out. What the hell, Chris? Victoria is my colleague, and we were just discussing upcoming assignments. Tasks? Nonsense! You looked at each other and laughed like old lovers, Chris shouted. We didn't touch each other, I laughed. Have you seen her husband? If I had any less honest intentions than leaving you, Bill would have killed me. He played quarterback on the Penn State football team. Maybe he's one of those people who likes to share his wife. Chris, this is crazy. I don't know any husband who likes this. I told Chris about Victoria's upcoming project and explained the gist of our conversation. After some heated argument, I felt her anger begin to subside. I think she finally realized she was being unreasonable. She knew that her jealousy was driving her to irrational behavior. If I just stayed calm and showed my love, she would calm down sooner or later. I walked up to her and hugged her. I love you with all my heart. I won't let you go until you cool down. Ron, I... SHH, I said calmly. I felt that she wanted to hold on to her jealousy, but her emotions were draining her. I just continued to stand there, hugging her tenderly. I love you, Chris, and only you, I repeated quietly until I felt her relax. Finally, she looked up and gave me a weak smile. Well, let's go upstairs, and I'll show you how much I love only you. But this evening, on this most unusual evening, I sat and looked into Chris's eyes after I told her that I had a date tomorrow night. A date with my beautiful colleague, Victoria. I even suggested that she think about having a lover. This was all part of my plan. I wanted Chris to think about the world she was creating and to feel the pain and suffering that I had been feeling the last couple of weeks. I wanted her to understand that her world was beginning to change irreversibly. If we continue down this path, our marriage will change forever. Trust, loyalty, and devotion will become just a haze. My plan was based on Chris's jealousy and anticipating her decisions, decisions that were now difficult to predict. And then, as I sat silently, waiting, I got exactly the reaction I was hoping for. Chris grabbed the empty plate in front of her fiercely. She swung in that characteristic way women throw things with the elbow forward. I ducked under the table, trying to hide. Instinctively covering my face and head with my hands, I prepared for the flying projectile, but the plate never flew. 
I slowly stuck my head above the table level, squinting my eyes warily, still waiting for the blow. Instead, Chris lowered the plate back in front of her. She decided not to try to take my head off. Tears were streaming from her face. I think she couldn't believe what I was saying. How could the husband she seemed to know so well ask for such a thing? I saw shock and confusion in her eyes. I also saw pain. She was in pain, and I thought that was a good sign. She looked at me across the table, and I noticed her anger growing. Fuck you, Ron. How can you ask me to do something like that? Do you think I'll give you permission to have sex with that prostitute from your work? I knew she had been after you since that day at the summer picnic. She stood up abruptly and headed towards the exit from the kitchen. Go to hell, and you won't have any date, she screamed. A few seconds later, I heard our bedroom door slam shut. Looks like the door frame will have to be repaired. Later that night, when I finally went to bed, Chris was already asleep. There were used tissues on her nightstand, and I began to have doubts. Lying on the bed, I was not sure that I would be able to sleep. Thoughts about our family were spinning in my head. Perhaps I could find another way to convey to Chris the extent of the destruction she caused to our marriage by planning the affair. Was it necessary to take such a radical step to save our relationship? But the more I thought, the more I became convinced of my decision. This date was the only way I thought I could get through to her. Damn it, I was going to see this through. You can call me scum. I have been awarded this title more than once. Perhaps I even take it too easily. Last night I intentionally caused my wife maximum emotional pain, and although everything went as I expected, I did not get any pleasure from it. Yes, it was not a question of pleasure, but not revenge either. I tried to save our marriage. I showed Chris how destructive this path of cheating can become. I tried to make her realize what would happen if I started sleeping with other women and she with other men. I hoped that she was beginning to understand that infidelity would destroy our marriage. When I first found out about her plans to cheat, I thought about just talking to her. To say that I found these destructive letters. Let her know that I know how she plans to sleep with this man while I'm away in a couple of weeks. The thought of her being with another man disgusted me to the core. Open confrontation might have worked, but I wasn't sure it would be enough. Yes, she would feel guilty and repent. She would say it was a mistake. She would probably use the fact that she hasn't slept with him yet to her advantage. Most likely, she would promise that she would never do such a thing again and would assure how she regrets that I even thought about it. But I knew it wouldn't be enough. If I forgave her too easily, I would never be able to trust her again. I had to make her feel the pain that I was experiencing. Only then could she realize the scale of her betrayal. I needed to find a way to keep myself safe. This date plan might not have worked, but I was preparing for the worst even divorce. My intervention was supposed to be a turning point in our marriage, an event that would either completely destroy us or completely change our relationship. A simple showdown would have hushed up the problem, I knew it would only delay the inevitable the end of our marriage, and in the meantime, it would be torture for me. I was determined to tear our current marriage down to its core to expose all the destruction. I didn't understand what exactly drove Chris to cheat, but we had to figure it out or our marriage would die. If the damage isn't too great, perhaps we can rebuild what we had. The next morning Chris didn't say a word to me. I lay in bed and watched her get dressed acting as if I didn't exist. I realized that she had turned on silent, ignoring mode. She left the room, and I was left lying and thinking. It was Friday, the day of my date, and I didn't know what Chris had planned. I said a short prayer that she would not arrange a babysitter for the evening and go to her lover. I knew I was pushing her in that direction with my actions, but I hoped she wasn't that far along yet. I went downstairs, still in my pajamas. Chris stood in the kitchen, leaning on the countertop and drinking coffee. I poured myself a cup and took a sip. I decided to start a conversation. Maybe we should talk. I think we both have a lot to talk about. I hope that Chris spent last night thinking not only about what I said, but also about her own intentions. Judging by what I read in her letters, everything was obvious.
she planned to sleep with some man as soon as I left on my next business trip. Chris walked past me without saying a word and headed into the living room. I followed her. I saw that she had packed her suitcase and was already at the door when I entered. I'm leaving to visit my parents tonight, Ron. I can't believe what you're up to. I'll say one thing. You don't have my permission to go on a date. If you do go, this marriage is over. I didn't say anything. I just lowered my gaze as if admitting my guilt. If Chris wasn't going to admit her plan to cheat on me, then it was time to move on to the next stage of my plan. I looked up. Chris, I'll be back early in the morning. Maybe we can take the kids to the water park tomorrow. I wanted Chris to think that I still believed that my date wouldn't ruin our marriage. Damn you, Ron, she said and slammed the door forcefully. Another door to be repaired, I thought. Yes, it looks like I'm a scoundrel after all. In our bedroom, as I was getting dressed for work, I glanced at the photo of Chris and me sitting on the dresser. We were sitting at a table eating tapas in Marbella, Spain. It was our 10th anniversary and we left the children with my parents to fly to Seville. We spent a wonderful week on the Costa del Sol and in the beautiful gardens of the Alhambra in Granada. I wondered if such wonderful times were possible for us again. I knew I wouldn't give up without a fight, and that fight was for Chris's mind and emotions. She was already feeling them because of my actions over the past few days. She was experiencing the same sense of betrayal that I experienced on that first day after my discovery. Damn it, I cursed out loud and hit the chest of drawers with my fist. What happened to us? I sat down on the bed. I felt tears streaming down my face. Why was Chris going to cheat on me with some anonymous asshole? How could she do this to us? I told her I was going on a date, but it wasn't what it seemed at first glance. I was playing a dangerous game. It was all crazy, but I was going to follow through with my plan. I'm going on a date with Vic tonight. I called Bill, Vicky, and then Doug. I asked if they were ready to carry out our plan. They confirmed, and we discussed the details. As you've probably already guessed, the date wasn't supposed to be real. All this was just a staged performance. Bill was Vicky's husband and Doug was a close friend of ours. We had met before, and I convinced them to help me. I really had no intention of dating on the side. What idiot would believe that dating while married is normal? If you are married, you cannot be intimate with another person. And Chris will soon find out. But first, my date. On Friday evening, I stood near the Mahogany Restaurant, one of the most expensive in our area. I sent Chris a message. I love you and I want our marriage to work. I hope you love me too. I wrote these words with all my heart. A minute later the answer came. Then you won't go on this stupid date, right? I put the phone in my pocket. At that moment, an Uber arrived with Vika. I knew that Doug, her husband, was already inside at the bar. Vicky and I were about to enjoy a romantic dinner while Bill and his wife Hannah sat nearby. We will laugh and touch each other like lovers, but it will all be just a performance. You look great, Vic. Oh, Ron, you never say that to me at work. She was joking, but I noticed that she was blushing. Are you sure you want to do this, Vic? I know I'm asking a lot. Besides being colleagues, Ron, I consider you a friend. If I can help, I will. Thank you, Vic. I'll try to make this as less unpleasant as possible. The plan seems crazy, but as you explained, it could work. You know I would never do anything to harm your marriage. I would never cheat on Doug, but if you believe this can save your marriage, I want to help. I started to doubt. You're a good friend, Vic, but I'm not sure I can do this. Even pretending feels wrong. Ron, it's just dinner. Doug is there, and I'll go home with him after the meal. You're not doing anything wrong. I know, but I'm not a very good actor. Ron, just play the part. During dinner, pretend that I am your mistress. Imagine that we have dinner and then make passionate love. I'll pretend if you do too. Vic smiled and winked. I didn't usually think of Vika in this way. She was just a friend and an excellent project manager. But today, there was something sexy and attractive about the way she was dressed and the way she acted. She seemed to know that this was exactly what I needed. Thank you, Vic. 
I'll try not to undress you with my eyes. Too often. I looked at her, trying to portray a hungry wolf. Now it's my turn to tease. Vic tapped me on the shoulder. You're a real scoundrel, do you know that? She smiled widely. Would you like to have dinner, my lady? I smiled and motioned her to the door. Vic took my arm and we entered mahogany. This evening was going to cost me a pretty penny, so I was determined to enjoy it. In addition to our dinner with Vic, I also paid for Doug and Hannah. I reserved a table for them half an hour before ours. Hannah and Doug were good friends of Chris and I, and Hannah was very straightforward. She liked gossip and never missed an opportunity to poke her nose into other people's affairs. I convinced Doug to bring Hannah to dinner so she could witness my date. Doug was quite frugal, so the prospect of a free dinner at one of the most prestigious restaurants in the city suited him quite well. Do you think Hannah knows about Chris's plans to cheat on you? Doug asked as we discussed the details. This will be bad. We'll need to talk about this later. Doug, for Hannah, it's just a nice dinner at an expensive restaurant. She will never know that we arranged her presence. I hope you both enjoy the evening. You know I'll be there with Vic, but I won't say a word to Chris that you were part of this reenactment. When Vic and I entered, I looked around. Bill was sitting at the bar, and I nodded to him. He responded in kind. I also noticed Doug and Hannah at a table in the back of the room. Doug saw me, and I knew that if Hannah didn't notice us herself, Doug would point her out sooner or later. I warned him not to rush and ruin their dinner, so he had to wait until they were ready to leave. I was very tense when we sat down at our table. Vic, as always, carried herself with grace, charmed me, and soon I relaxed a little. We ordered drinks and food, but I still didn't know what to do next. Vic moved closer and took my hand. You're a good person, Ron, and I'm glad to spend this evening with you. She looked into my eyes. After you found out about Chris's plans, you didn't blow up your marriage. Most men would do this. You still love her and think about what's best for your children. Few people could handle this the way you do. Vic, I'm not sure this will work, but I had to try. Whatever happens, it will be difficult and painful for everyone. But I know you, Ron. You will find the least destructive path for your family. You can handle it. She leaned over and kissed me on the cheek. I turned away to accept the kiss, and out of the corner of my eye, I noticed Hannah get up from the table. She walked quickly towards us, looking straight at me. There was fire in her eyes. When Hannah approached our table, I stood up, trying to look guilty. I pretended to be shocked. Hannah dug. Oh, good to see you. I pretended to be confused. Hannah gave me a stern look. Ron, how are you? I didn't expect to see you here this evening. She turned her gaze to Vic, but continued to talk to me. Where is Chris? Then she stared straight into my eyes again. She's with her parents, I answered quietly. He paused, then introduced her. Hannah, Doug, this is Vic. Vic, these are my old friends. I deliberately did not explain anything further. Nice to meet you, said Vic. We stood in awkward silence for several long seconds until I sat back down at the table. Would you like to join us for a drink? I asked the first thing that came to mind. Doug quickly responded, No, thank you. We just finished dinner and are about to leave. He glanced at Hannah, who was already rummaging through her bag. Not yet, she said, finally pulling out her phone. She picked it up, took a photo of Vic and me, and then lowered the device. Now we can leave. Hannah gloomily nodded goodbye. All the best, Ron. Nice to meet you, Vic. Doug looked embarrassed, but hurried after his wife to the exit. Vic and I sat in silence for a few moments, then we both burst out laughing. My plan worked even better than I expected. Hannah even took a photo. I was sure that he would soon be with Chris. Don't be mad at Hannah. She's a really good friend, Vic said. Now she wants to strangle you, but deep down she wants only the best for you and Chris. Yes, I know, and I will need to find a way to thank her. I don't think I can tell her that we set her up, but I will try to atone somehow. I felt a little guilty for dragging Hannah into this, but I hoped she wouldn't be too upset to learn that her involvement could have saved our marriage. 
My phone vibrated in my pocket. I pulled it out and saw a message from Doug. There was one word written there, ready. I realized that Hannah had already communicated with Chris and most likely sent her the photo. I felt sorry for Chris. Despite her planned betrayal, I understood the pain she was now experiencing. It was painful. I didn't intend to leave her in this state for long, hopefully just for one night. Tomorrow we will talk and she can try to explain why she was going to cheat on me. I stood up and walked over to Bill, who was sitting at the bar. Bill, do me the favor of joining your lovely wife at the table. You're in a beautiful restaurant, and you and Hannah make a gorgeous couple. My evening is coming to an end. I took out a credit card and handed it to him. I pay for everything. Enjoy. Bill nodded. He seemed to notice the sadness in my eyes. My pleasure, Ron. He patted me on the shoulder. I hope everything works out for you. When Bill returned to the table, I took out my phone and took a photo of them. Perhaps I will need this as evidence later. They both nodded understandingly. After I left the restaurant, I went to my parents. It was still early and they were awake. Mom immediately realized that something was wrong, but did not ask anything. She took me to the kitchen where I sat down at the table. My father sat down next to me while my mother poured everyone a glass of iced tea. Mom, Dad, I began. Chris and I are having problems now. I don't want to go into details yet, but I hope we can resolve them. I think you'll hear more about this in the coming weeks, but I just can't talk today. It was difficult for me to contain my emotions. Mom just nodded, and my father looked at me with an expression of pain on his face. They seemed to understand everything. Mom settled me in the guest room. The night passed restlessly. Thoughts of what Chris was going through haunted him. Even though Chris was with her parents, I knew our home phone wouldn't stop ringing. I didn't come home, and she probably decided that I was at Vicky's. Two weeks ago, I realized how painful it is to realize that you are no longer enough for your spouse. What you thought was a strong and loving relationship turned out to be fragile, perhaps even destroyed to the core. What if our future of growing old together, playing with our grandchildren, and traveling around the country in a camper van is no longer there? Unable to sleep, I got up at six in the morning and made coffee. When I turned on the phone, I saw that Chris had called around two in the morning, but had not left a message. I sent her a message, I'm going home. Then he added, we need to talk. Can you come without children? Chris answered almost immediately, I called home all night, you didn't come home. After a while, another message came, I don't believe you did this, it's all over between us. It promised to be a long and difficult day. My phone vibrated again, start packing, I'll come to help. I was standing in the living room when I saw her drive up to the house. Chris jumped out of the car and stormed into the house, looking at me. Then, without saying a word, she attacked me. I expected this and covered my head with my hands, bending over to protect myself. Chris swung her arms wildly, trying to hit me from all sides. I just let her vent her anger. I am 185 centimeters tall and weigh about 95 kilograms, and Chris is small, weighing barely half of me. I knew she couldn't do me any serious harm, so I just endured it. I heard her crying. How could you? How could you? She screamed repeating it over and over until she finally ran out of energy and collapsed on the floor. I stood there for a while and then sat down next to him. I don't believe you really did it, Ron. What the hell? She raised her eyes, full of tears, and stopped, looking at me. Was it worth it, Ron? We've been married for fifteen years. Was sex with Victoria worth our marriage? Chris fell silent, continuing to sob. Looking at her, I felt my eyes fill with tears too. Despite wanting to be angry, I realized that sitting like this on the floor with our marriage in limbo was just sad. Minutes passed, the crying subsided, but the atmosphere remained heavy. Having gathered my thoughts, I decided to act. Everything went according to my plan, and I brought the situation to this point. Chris felt the pain of betrayal. It's time to take the next step. What, Chris? You didn't like that I went and slept with another woman. What's wrong with that? Now is the modern world. 
Many couples practice open marriage. What's wrong with me being with a young and beautiful woman from time to time? You too can find a young guy with a big. Fuck you, Ron. Of course I don't want that. I didn't do it, Chris. I paused to let my words take effect. I didn't go on a date with Vika. Chris's eyes flashed with anger and she jumped up. Oh no, don't, Ron, she screamed. Don't you dare tell me that. Hannah saw you together. She even sent me a photo. You were at Mahogany. You know how much I love this place. You took her there on purpose, right? I continued. It was all a setup, Chris. I didn't go on a date. I had no intention. All this is for the sake of... Chris looked at me as if I was speaking a foreign language. This is nonsense, and you know it. Call my parents. What time did Hannah see us at the restaurant? Around 1945. What time did she call you and send you a photo? Around 8 p.m. Then I was already with my parents. At 2015 I was sitting in the kitchen, drinking tea. You can call them and ask. Okay, so Hannah interrupted your romantic dinner and you decided to cancel everything. I'm glad this happened. No, that's not the point. Think about it. Do you really think that I had a romantic dinner with Victoria in the presence of her husband? He sat at the bar while she was at the table with me. I made sure Hannah and Doug were there too. Moreover, I paid for their dinner. Even more nonsense, Ron. It's just funny. No, Chris, it's true. After Hannah left, Bill just had a romantic dinner with her. I hope he was good. I paid for it too. I took out my phone and showed her a photo of Victoria sitting at the table with Bill. You can call my parents. You can call Vika and Bill. I'll give you their number. They will confirm. There was no meeting. It was never planned. I saw Chris's expression change. She began to believe my words. I came up with everything. I have nothing with Victoria or any other woman. I don't want to date or sleep with anyone outside of our marriage. What the hell do you mean, Ron? You don't. She looked at me in complete bewilderment. Yes, Chris, my date with Victoria was just a performance. But why, Ron? Why did you do this to me? Because of your plans, Chris. Your plans to sleep with that guy, Brian. I paused so she could process what I had said. I was never going to go on a date with Victoria, but you were going to go out with Brian, weren't you? You were going to sleep with him the next time I went on a business trip. I saw Chris's face change between emotions, from anger to complete shock. She began to realize that I knew about her plans. A hand flew to her open mouth and her face turned white. Suddenly she lost consciousness and fell. Five minutes later Chris came to her senses. I laid her down on the sofa and put a cold compress on her forehead. This time allowed me to cool down a little. If I wanted this conversation to be of any use, I needed to remain as calm as possible. Chris woke up and looked at me. She watched silently for several seconds. Ron, did you want to go on a date with Victoria? Was this all a setup? No, Chris. I raised my voice. My anger rose again, but I held it in. No, I didn't want to set you up. I wanted to show you what it means. What does it feel like to feel betrayed? How does it feel, Chris? Ron, I don't. Yes, Chris, you did. You planned to sleep with that bastard and ruin our marriage. But Ron, it was all a fantasy. I didn't mean to. Well, now you know how I felt a couple of weeks ago when I found out you were planning on sleeping with that Brian guy. Your deception was not very good, Chris. You forgot to delete the sent items folder. Everything was there. Chris sat up, her hand moving to her lips. Oh God, Ron, did you read this? She fell silent, unable to speak out the dirty plans she was devising. I stood up and shouted. I read all about your plans with Brian, how you were going to meet him the next time I was gone, how you wanted to please him, taste him, and do everything you don't do with me. I was already screaming. Meeting is what you called it, and I call it cheating, having sex, going wrong. Isn't that what you were going to do? Tell me, Chris, tell me about all those liberated things you planned to do with Brian while I was away on business. I, I, I know how it works, Chris. You planned to find some guy with a huge size to have sex with you properly, right? 
you wanted to please him, maybe even try a different kind of sex. Just like a girl of easy virtue, huh, Chris? Did he send you pictures of his huge size? Is that how it all happened? I was so angry, I thought my head was going to explode. Ron, this, this. No words, Chris. I wish I had told you in advance that I knew about Brian. It's a shame I didn't give you time to come up with a story. No, Ron, that's enough. Please, it wasn't like that. Tears streamed down her face. Nonsense, Chris, that's exactly what happened. I read your letters, remember. I went to the closet in the hallway and took out my suitcase. Well, now you have time. I headed towards the door. Ron, please don't go. I love you. I'm so sorry. Chris jumped up and ran towards me. I held her with my outstretched arm. Suddenly, I felt almost calm again. Chris, I didn't go on a date or cheat on you, but you were planning on cheating on me. I will ask you one thing. I paused to let her know I was calm. I wanted her to hear these words. Why didn't you just divorce me first? If we can divorce in a civilized manner, perhaps we can maintain some kind of amicable relationship. Please, let's do this for the sake of the children. Chris cried loudly. I saw her whole body tremble. Oh my God, Ron, no divorce. I don't like him. I barely know him. I don't want a divorce. I love you. I just looked at her with such anger that I could not speak. Please don't go. I'm so sorry for what I did. I'm not even sure why I did it. Honestly, I was going to refuse. Oh, come on, Chris. Don't think I'm an idiot. No, really, I already refused before. I think I wanted it. I wanted something. But I didn't think I could actually do it. That's enough, Chris. I don't want to listen to this now. I want you to think about what you planned and why. After my stupid fake date with Vic, you now know how much it hurts to be betrayed. This is exactly what you were going to do to me, and you didn't care. No, Ron, you weren't supposed to find out. I just wanted. Enough. I can't listen to this now. I'll be gone for three days, Chris. I want us both to think about where we are now. Can you do it, Chris? She just nodded, looking defeated. I'll come back and we can talk then. Maybe we can make things work, maybe not. Maybe you want freedom, or maybe I want a divorce. I'm sure I can find a woman who won't betray me. Anyway, I hope, for the sake of the children, we can remain civilized. Oh my God, Ron, I don't want a divorce. I love you. You love me, but you cheat on me. It doesn't happen that way, not in my eyes. I'm so sorry for what I did, but I never cheated on you. I haven't done anything yet. Nonsense, Chris. You've already cheated on me, even if you didn't sleep with him. Chris looked down, shaking her head. Ron, I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. If you want to stay married, I need you to tell me everything in your own words, without all the lovey-dovey bullshit like in those letters. I want to know when it started, what you have done so far, and most importantly, why. Why did you want to sleep with some guys you barely know? Chris burst into tears like a child. I took my suitcase and opened the door. Chris raised her head, tears streaming down her red eyes. Please stay, Ron. Please. Three days, Chris. I'll be back on Wednesday. Take the day off, and I'll come by in the morning when the kids are at school. Don't call or text me until then, unless it's an emergency. Understood? Chris nodded, and I walked out the door. I headed to the Marriott, my head boiling with anger. It was a nice place with a restaurant, bar, pool, and everything. My emotions were still running high, but I was going to try to relax. I wasn't sure how things would turn out on Wednesday, but I was still hoping to save our marriage. Although I was not sure that after our conversation I would want to do this. One thing I knew for sure, this bastard was going to get drunk tonight. I went to work on Monday with a slight hangover, but to my surprise I was quite productive. This fact strengthened my confidence. Maybe I can live without Chris. Maybe with time I can rebuild my life without her. I knew that no matter the outcome, the children were my main responsibility. Whether I divorced Chris or we stayed together, I needed to find a way to overcome my anger and resentment. Alone in my hotel on Monday evening, I felt sadness pressing down on me. 
It felt like a huge boulder was trying to crush my soul into dust. I wasn't sure if I could handle the betrayal. Even if she didn't sleep with him, it still felt like cheating. She was betrayed. She forgot the to be faithful part of our vows. I tried very hard to implement my date plan. I told myself it was to save our marriage, but maybe it was for revenge. Maybe all this was just to hurt her. My thoughts only added to the burden pressing on me. Now, after our initial encounter, I still doubted whether there was a way forward with Chris. Will I ever be able to trust her again, clerical girl, no matter how it is? Do I really know her? Obviously, I'm not good enough for her sexually. Will I ever be enough for her? Anger flared up in my head again. To hell with this. If I'm not good enough, Chris can go his own way. Let him do what he wants. Let him have fun where he wants. I will focus on the children. I'll find a way to get custody, or at least split it in half. I'll focus on them. Between work and children, my life will have a purpose. This will be enough. It just has to be enough. I fell asleep that night from pure emotional exhaustion, but woke up feeling relieved. Work, children with or without Chris, it will be enough. Besides, I have parents. They will be nearby. I saw Vic on Monday afternoon, and she asked how my conversation with Chris went. I replied that everything was about as I expected. I assured her that Chris understood that our date was only a deception caused by her own behavior. Her real deception was now the only problem. On Wednesday morning, I stood on the threshold of our house. I knocked and then slowly opened the door. I immediately smelled cinnamon. Chris looked out of the kitchen. I saw the worry on her face. Can you come into the kitchen, Ron? She disappeared behind the door again. On the table was a large pan of homemade cinnamon rolls and a carafe of coffee. She didn't dress sexy, just a t-shirt and jeans, but they hugged her figure tightly. I involuntarily looked her up and down. She was beautiful. I couldn't help but think that I might have lost her this morning, and these conflicting feelings filled my head. Ron, I'm not trying to bribe you with cinnamon rolls and coffee. She knew it was my favorite breakfast. Okay, maybe trying a little. I could see she was trying to lighten the mood, and I was grateful for that. I just couldn't sleep, and I needed something to do. Her nervousness made her speak faster than usual. I raised my hand. It's okay, Chris. Bribe accepted, I smiled. We both sat down, took a bun and poured ourselves some coffee and started eating. Ron, I, I raised my hand again to stop her. Chris, before we start, is there anything you want to know about my so-called date? I knew it was cruel, but I needed you to understand how hurt I was before we started this conversation. Oh God, Ron, you have no idea, I was crushed. She stopped and covered her mouth with her hand. I think you have any idea, Ron, that was your goal, wasn't it? She fell silent, now clearly contemplating her next words. It was like the end of my life, like my world had collapsed. I was devastated when I thought about you and Vic. She fell silent again. I, you, oh Ron, everything is wrong. My stupidity ruined everything. Tears filled her eyes. I just couldn't. She couldn't continue. Tears drowned her voice. I just sat there and let her cry. I realized that for the first time since I read those stupid letters, I felt some kind of sympathy for her. While she was crying, I was thinking about my date plan. I was aiming for maximum pain and it worked. But now I had to admit to myself that I got satisfaction from the pain it caused. Now we were on the verge of ending our marriage. I felt tears welling up in my eyes. This was not what I wanted. We both sit at the table and cry like fools. Chris heard my sobs and raised her head. She saw that I was about to cry, and I saw her eyes full of tears. Now I couldn't stop. Tears rolled down my cheeks. Ron, honey, don't cry. It's all my fault. Please, honey, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Maybe she deserved this fake date, but I knew that I was not perfect in this situation either. I tried to calm down. No, Chris. Somehow I know it's not all your fault. I should have done something or maybe didn't do something. Why couldn't I be enough for you? Why, darling, why? I fell onto the table, 
sobbing just as hard as Chris. She jumped up, ran around the table, and hugged me from behind. She put her head on the back of her head, and we just cried. I started with the intention of shocking Chris as a way to save our marriage. And now we are both sitting at the table, and our marriage is in complete chaos. After a few minutes, I came to my senses a little and motioned for Chris to come back and sit down. Okay, Chris, just tell me everything from beginning to end. Don't lie or embellish. If we have a chance, you have to put it all out there. Before you start, I want you to know that I really want to save this marriage, and I'm sorry for my dating antics. It was cruel. No, Ron, it wasn't cruel. This was exactly what I needed to realize my stupidity. Just the thought that you could go and sleep with some woman almost killed me. Now that we've both cried, our conversation seems to be turning in a different direction. We began to understand what was happening. I don't know what happened, but it all started a couple of years ago. I was talking to Leela, you know, from work. We were having lunch, and she was telling me about her crazy sex life. She is divorced and seems to be dating four men at the same time. In general, she talked about pleasure, other types of sex, and all that. Leela said she didn't do any of this when she was married, but now she enjoys it. This conversation made me think that perhaps I was missing something. I realized that I didn't know much about sex. Of course, I knew the basics. I knew what it was to please after all. I was making a mate for you, but the way Leela described it, I realized that I really didn't know anything. I knew Chris was pouring his heart out to me, so I didn't interrupt. Chris continued to explain that she started watching adult films, reading erotic stories, and her sexual side came out. She bought toys and began fantasizing about different sexual acts. Honestly, Ron, it wasn't a matter of cheating at that moment. Treason, Chris, I said angrily. You call it a hookup, but it's treason. You are right. Treason. I didn't think about it at all. I wanted to do all this with you. Why didn't you just talk to me or attack me in bed? I tried. I felt my anger rising and Chris saw it, but before I could speak. Ron, remember that night after the New Year's party? Do you remember all the crazy things I did back then? Chris, you were drunk, and the next morning you acted embarrassed. I even felt guilty, as if I had taken advantage of you. Chris continued to explain that she wanted to try sexy things, but didn't want me to think she was a prostitute. Oh, Ron, some of the things I think about and fantasize about are very dirty. I couldn't even talk to you about it. It's too shameful. I had to laugh. Chris had no idea my level of depravity. After all, I am an American man. What she thought was perverted was probably quite harmless. She mentioned pleasure and other types of sex, but I knew there were many other things we could explore. But I was still angry that she decided to explore this outside of our marriage. What the hell, Chris? Couldn't you talk to me? Couldn't you come and say you wanted me to do something differently? No, Ron, I couldn't. In your eyes, I was your sweet wife and the mother of your children. Are we going to have dirty sex and then get up in the morning and go to church? Besides, at that moment I had no intention of sleeping with any man. It was just my fantasy. I wasn't going to do anything. Yes, of course, Chris. I read your letters. You were going to sleep with this guy the next time I left town. I know, maybe I really thought about it. But maybe not. This is the third time I planned to meet this guy, and twice I backed out. I couldn't imagine having dirty sex with some man, and then returning home as if nothing had happened. I'll be honest with you, Ron. I think I could do it this time. I was starting to get tired of all the teasing and preparation for sex, and I started to think that maybe this time I wouldn't say no. I looked her straight in the eyes. I wondered if she was now deliberately trying to hurt me, maybe because my date stunt hurt her. But when I looked at her, I saw tears running down her cheeks. She tried to say something, choking, struggling to hold back the words. I'm so sorry, Ron. God, I'm so sorry. How did I get to this point? I became some kind of prostitute who wanted these crazy things. She burst into tears again. Ron, please don't leave me. I love you. I'll go to a psychologist and get rid of these crazy ideas. I will never watch adult films or read erotica again. 
I'll be the same again. No, Chris, I don't think you can. I don't think this is possible. Chris buried her head in the table and continued to sob. Chris, Chris, look at me. She raised her head, tears still streaming down her face. What you say hurts me a lot, but thank you for your honesty. She buried her face in the table again. I heard her repeat, forgive me, forgive me for everything. This time I walked over to her, hugged her from behind, and let her cry again. There was a lot to discuss and a lot more tears to shed, but Chris did what I asked. She told the truth, and I understood what our problem was. My wife wanted to explore her sexuality. It wasn't a problem. The problem was that she had to do this to me. We decided to try counseling and went to it weekly for a couple of months. Sometimes it felt like we were talking about the same things over and over again, but it really helped. I think the biggest benefit was that we learned to talk to each other about previously taboo topics, things we simply couldn't talk about before. We realized that the problem was in communication. Chris could not express her desires because she thought that I would consider her a girl of easy virtue. I didn't insist because I thought she had no desire and was afraid that she would think I was a pervert. This fundamental lack of communication nearly destroyed our marriage. At one of our sessions, the sexologist suggested that we push the boundaries of communication. Chris, who are you? I asked. She tried to answer, but hesitated. Chris, please tell me, who are you? I, I'm a girl of easy virtue. She paused. Who are you? I'm a pervert. It was difficult for us to say these words, but I was proud that we could say them to each other. Great, said the therapist. And remember, this is just therapy. We decided that being a prostitute or a pervert is okay as long as it stays within your marriage. Continue. I decided to start. Chris, I want to tie you up and give you pleasure. The therapist intervened again. Remember, Chris, you may or may not do what you talk about here, but it is important to express your fantasies without feeling guilty or judged. Chris hesitated, then smiled. And I want to please you. I have to admit, Hearing my church wife say that was both shocking and insanely sexy, I felt myself tense up. I think that's enough for today, the therapist said, getting up. And remember, we said, there is lovemaking and there is sex. I know you have made love several times over the past weeks, but I ask you to try sex. We need to take the kids to their grandparents for this, don't we, Chris? I winked at her and please talk about these things with each other outside the office. Communication is the key to making your marriage work. We made love regularly after our reconciliation, but it still seemed the same as before, tender, but not passionate. We just finished making love. Chris, I'm still confused. I still feel like I don't know you. You seem to be passionate and I want it, but you don't show it to me. The thought of being more sexy excites me, but at the same time scares me. I feel like if I do these things to you, you'll stop respecting me. Ron, what would you think of your church-going wife if she asked for dirty sex? What if I tell you that I want to please you, or you've had a different kind of sex with me? What would you think of me then? How will we return to normal life? Chris, are you making me feel good, or are we having another type of sex? This is a dream for me. This would make me the happiest husband. Do you really think that those couples you see in church are the happiest because they have boring sex? Chris looked a little dazed. Do you really think so? Hell yes. Look at Bill and Melinda. Chris's eyes widened. Bill and Melinda were a couple from our church who always seemed very happy together. They constantly held hands and touched each other. Melinda often gave Bill little kisses on the cheek to thank him for something. They were about the same age as our parents, and neither of them looked like models. I bet that smile Bill wears to church is because he gave her a lot of pleasure, and then they had a special kind of sex on Saturday night. I laughed out loud. Stop. I won't be able to get that image out of my head the next time I see them, Chris protested with a smile. But after a few seconds, she turned to me. Do you really think so? Yes, Chris. Every man wants his wife to be relaxed in bed, and the rest of the time a good wife and mother. Is this what you want, Ron? 
Do you want to do dirty things to me? Do you have some kind of kinky side that I didn't know about? I laughed out loud. Chris, you have no idea. Now Chris laughed. Ron, I'll take the kids to my parents on Saturday. And then I want you to have sex with me all night. A wide smile appeared on her face, and suddenly the same smile appeared on me. Maybe I died and went to heaven. That Saturday, Chris took the children to her parents and went shopping. We were going to have dinner and then go to a piano bar. Neither of us were fans of dancing. I was ready for our date and stood at the minibar in the living room. Chris entered the house with bags from various women's stores. I noticed her brown hair with golden streaks, now four inches shorter, with bangs. The shoulder-length strands on the sides were curled inward, framing her face. Chris, your hair is just amazing. I really like this image, I said, glancing at the bags. What did you buy for us? Sexy lingerie? I teased her, trying to look into the bags. It's none of your business, she said with a smile and turned around so that I couldn't look inside. At least until night falls and headed towards the stairs. Would you like me to make you a drink? I suggested. I'm going to take a shower. Bring me a glass of Chardonnay in about 15 minutes, okay? Of course, dear. While she was walking up the stairs, I admired my wife. She was beautiful, especially with that look of excitement on her face. After two children, she has not gained an ounce of excess weight. I always thought her butt was her best feature. They weren't too big, but they weren't small either. I found myself admiring them again as she walked up the steps. I poured her some wine, and when I entered the bedroom, she was coming out of the dressing room. She was wearing a very sexy set of lingerie, a lace bra and panties, as well as stockings. Ron, you weren't supposed to see this until tonight she exclaimed excitedly and ran back to the dressing room. A minute later, she came out in a transparent robe. I was speechless, but not for long. Is this for me? I asked with a smile. Chris blushed, but also smiled widely. She turned to the mirror and began to put on her earrings. I placed the glass of wine on the dresser in front of her, hugged her waist, and began to gently kiss her neck. You really are a beautiful woman, Chris. She relaxed, allowing me to kiss her. I felt that she was enjoying the moment. I decided to take advantage of this and slid my hand under the robe, lowering it to the front of her panties. Chris sighed loudly, tensed, and pulled me away. Get out of here, okay? You won't get anything until you take me to dinner, she said with a smile. Dinner? I'm not hungry. Get out. Now, she pointed to the door, laughing. Well, you can't blame a man for trying, I said, leaving the room. Ten minutes later, Chris came down the stairs. I just stood and looked at her. Her burgundy dress showed off her figure perfectly and ended a couple of inches above her knees. Its V-neckline drew my gaze to her cleavage. Her C-cup breasts looked larger than usual. Chris, you look amazing. Thanks, Ron, she replied, coming towards me as if about to kiss me. Are you sure this isn't too provocative? She teased me. I smelled her perfume and, looking down at her, I couldn't take my eyes off her cleavage. I swallowed deeply. No, Chris, this is perfect. Suddenly I felt her hand on the front of my trousers. I was already half aroused. You really seem to like it, don't you, big boy? She said with a smile. I just swallowed again. But suddenly she abruptly removed her hand. I think it's time for us to go to dinner. We don't want to be late. I knew that she was taking revenge on me for my attempt earlier, but I was madly in love with this new sexy Chris. I felt on top of the world sitting across from this amazing woman. I continued to imagine her in the same underwear that I had seen earlier. Later, in the piano bar, I asked the head waiter to seat us in the most secluded place possible. He smiled as I placed a twenty in his hand. We sat down and ordered a couple of drinks. Both enjoyed the live music. The pianist was truly talented. Chris, you look amazing today, I said, placing my hand on her knee and then sliding up her leg. She smiled but stopped my wandering hand. I just can't keep my hands off you today. I liked flirting with my wife. We were halfway through our second drink when I moved my hand up her leg again. Chris grabbed my wrist again, stopping my movement. 
I looked at her. She continued to look forward, smiling and watching the pianist play. In my usual conversational manner, I casually said, Today I want to pleasure you until you scream. Chris slowly turned to me and answered in the same calm tone. And I want to please you. This is what shocked me. I looked around, thinking that everyone in the bar must have heard it. But after a couple of seconds, the anxiety subsided and I felt unexpected excitement. How can I get out of this situation now? Chris continued to surprise me by slowly taking my hand and pulling it higher towards her. It turned out that she took off her underwear in the toilet. It looked like she wanted to let me touch her under the table. I barely had time to touch her when our eyes met. Take me home right now, or I'll have sex with you right on this table. I threw $60 on the table and picked Chris up. Your desire is the law. We hurriedly headed for the exit. As I passed the doors, I noticed the maitre de hotel smiling at us. We stayed at his most secluded table for less than half an hour. He understood everything. He seemed to notice my bulging fly. He's probably seen this more than once. I stopped in front of him, smiling, and he nodded. I handed him another twenty. Thank you, my friend, I said. He nodded again. I'm always glad. Enjoy your evening. As soon as we entered the house, I grabbed Chris and kissed her passionately. Chris pulled away. Not here. To the bedroom. The rest will come later. She spoke in short sentences, but got the point across perfectly. In the bedroom, we quickly took off our clothes, leaving the stockings on Chris. Her skin was smooth and soft. From the feeling in the restaurant, I knew that she had cut her hair, but now I saw her beauty in full. Chris slowly knelt down in front of me and began to caress me. Her movements were so gentle and passionate, as if she wanted to explore every part of me. Her touch brought me to bliss. She did it with such a feeling that I literally lost my head. Everything looked different than before now her touches were sincere, as if she was enjoying every second. Her lips touched me tenderly, and I felt the tension growing. She was so attentive to me, as if she understood exactly what was needed at that moment. This feeling was unforgettable. I felt I couldn't hold back any longer and warned her. In response, Chris only intensified her movements, clearly understanding that she was making me absolutely happy. As I relaxed, my legs gave way and I fell onto the bed. Chris looked very pleased. She sat next to him and glowed with happiness. I did it, she said happily. Thank you, Ron, for your trust. It was incredible. Gathering my strength, I raised my head and looked at her. Her happy smile made me fall in love with her again. Who is this woman? She doesn't just make me happy. She gives me a feeling of true understanding and intimacy. I dropped my head back onto the bed and, turning to the ceiling, said, God, Chris, that was amazing. I want to give you even more pleasure, but I'm not sure I can move. Yes, I need you to do this, Ron. You can just relax. Chris slowly began to move towards me. When her face was level with mine, she kissed me tenderly without losing concentration. Her eyes were full of passion and trust, and I felt my heart fill with warmth and tenderness for her. I wanted to express my love in a way that she could feel with all her being. I started with light kisses, touching her skin, feeling her breath. I knew that these moments were important for both of us tenderness, intimacy, and the desire to give each other joy. Chris relaxed, and I, sensing her reaction, continued to give her affection. Her smile, her barely audible sighs filled the room with an atmosphere of love and mutual understanding. I wanted her to feel completely safe, so that she knew that every gesture I made was a manifestation of my sincere feelings. Chris's every move seemed to me to be the embodiment of her trust in me. Her breathing was getting a little faster, and I knew she was enjoying every second. We were one in that moment, and I felt there was more between us than just physical intimacy. When she finally went limp and sank down next to me, I knew that I had given her happiness. Her eyes closed, a calm, satisfied smile was written on her face. I held her close to me, and we both simply enjoyed the silence and warmth of each other, realizing that these moments meant more to us than any words. I knelt between her legs, stroking her hand while I waited for Chris to finally come to his senses. 
When she opened her eyes, our eyes met, and I smiled at her to reassure her. I leaned towards her, and our lips met in a long, tender kiss. Her warmth enveloped me, and I felt the passion flare up between us again. We moved in time with each other, surrendering to this moment, as if the world around us had disappeared. Oh yes, she whispered, pressing closer to me. Don't stop. Chris had never spoken like that before, and it only made us more excited. We were absorbed in each other, merging in a single impulse. I felt her breathing quicken, how she was lost in this moment with me. I turned her over on her side. Our movements did not slow down, as if we understood each other without words. I pulled her towards me, feeling her warmth and her trust, trying to give her everything she wanted. She turned to me, her eyes shone, and I saw so much tenderness and happiness in them that it overwhelmed me. We moved in the same rhythm, and when a wave of intimacy washed over us both, I felt that this moment was special, one of those that remains in the memory forever. Chris was breathing heavily, lying next to her, and I hugged her and pulled her towards me. The bed was warm and cozy, and soon we both fell asleep, falling into a peaceful sleep, as if all our dreams had come true right here and now. I woke up early in the morning when the first rays of the sun entered the room. I got up and went to the bathroom to relieve myself. My whole body reminded me that last night we had sex, it wasn't just love. I returned to bed, where Chris had already begun to stir. She turned to face me, our eyes met. You were incredible last night, Ron. You too, Chris. We started kissing. Her hand slid down. Looks like you're ready again, she whispered. I also did not remain in debt. And you, it seems, too. We kissed with new passion. I carefully rolled on to her. We began to move together, slowly and gently. This time we didn't have sex, we made love. Let's open your Psalter books to page 223 and sing, All the Creatures of Our Lord, said the priest. After morning sex and breakfast, we met Chris's kids and parents at church. There were happy smiles on our faces. I was proud that Chris and I were one of those happy couples. We had overcome a crisis in our marriage and were now on a new path. After the service, we stood outside. Chris approached me, stood on her tiptoes, and kissed me on the cheek. With a sly smile, she whispered, Am I still your church lady? Yes, Chris, you will always be my church lady. But now I go to church with a huge smile on my face. Our first night of passion wasn't overly kinky, but we realized that by being open and honest with each other, we could create a truly passionate sex life. Over the next few years, we explored our sexual sides in a variety of ways. Sex has become an important and enjoyable part of our marriage. Many might call our experiments perverted, but for us, they were exciting adventures that have yet to be told. Our marriage was on the rocks, but we found a way back. In addition to our sexual experiments, we continued to make love regularly. For me, it was a celebration of our marriage and family and our sexual adventures with my passionate tigress became a bonus of my whole life. Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one. Click to the next one. Click to the next one. Click to the next one.